Before the role of Kylo Ren in Star Wars The Force Awakens made him an international star, Adam Driver was a serious, Juilliard-trained actor who preferred theater and independent films to blockbuster fare. And if not for a twist of fate and a faulty mountain bike, this young talent from middle America might never have become a Hollywood superstar at all. Here's a look back at Driver's journey from eating garbage in small-town Indiana to becoming a big-screen celeb. He was a pyromaniac dumpster diver in high school. After his parents divorced, seven-year-old Driver moved with his mother to her hometown of Mishawaka, Indiana, where she eventually got remarried to a Baptist preacher, and her son got very bored very fast. Mishawaka is many good things, but cultural hub of the world it is not. Lacking any better options, a teenage driver and his friends entertain themselves by starting fires, dumpster diving for stale potato chips, and starting a real-life fight club in a field behind a strip mall party supply store, where the only rule was that you weren't allowed to hit your opponents in the nuts. He had a couple false starts. After graduating from high school, Driver was interested enough in acting to apply to Juilliard, but when he didn't get in, he ended up back in Indiana, where he paid rent to live in a back room at his parents' house, and wasn't allowed to come through the front door without knocking. The situation was so tense that Driver worked three jobs and spent his free time hanging out at McDonald's instead of at home, and eventually he tried again to make a go of it as an actor, this time in LA. But again, fate threw a wrench in the works. Driver headed west only to have his car break down in Texas. The cost of repairs left him nearly broke, and when he couldn't find any work right away in California, he had no choice but to go back home once more. The worst part? The Los Angeles odyssey that cost him everything only lasted a week. He served his country. After 9-11, Driver enlisted in the Marines, which ended up being a great fit for his energetic attitude and his love for teamwork. The general abuse is part of the whole thing, but uh, 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 in, in a good way. Driver anticipated being deployed to the Middle East along with the rest of his unit, only to break his sternum in a bizarre mountain biking accident that put an end to his military career. A devastating blow. In an interview with Esquire, he said, I would put my gas mask and pack on and go for runs. I would take all these painkillers and lift weights. But it didn't work. So yeah, there's a lot of guilt. It was hard. After being medically discharged, Driver decided to give Juilliard a second shot, and this time, he was accepted. But the transition back to civilian life was tough, and not just on him. According to the actor, he made several of his classmates cry before he realized he needed to dial back his military-grade intensity. He made out with four people per day, every day. After graduating from Juilliard, Driver had a series of personal and professional successes, getting cast in two plays and moving in with his girlfriend. But it came at a cost. Between rehearsals and his relationship, his life was a constant series of makeouts. During the day, he sucked face with Kristen Milioti and Margarita Lovieva while rehearsing a play called Retributionists. At night, he made out with Seth Numerick in another play, Slipping. And with his girlfriend waiting back at their apartment, Driver's mouth was getting a serious daily workout, and he was getting well acquainted with the pharmacy's oral hygiene section. According to the actor, after a long day of kissing people professionally, there was a lot of mouthwash and toothpaste before I could go home. He brought theater to the troops. Even after his role on Girls put him on the path to stardom, Adam Driver never forgot his time in the Marines taught him the discipline to succeed, and he wanted to give something back. So he started a nonprofit organization called Arts in the Armed Forces, which brings live theater performances to troops around the world. You couldn't ask for a better audience. It's so diverse and grateful. The response to the project has been overwhelmingly positive, and for Driver, it's a way of continuing his military service and mitigating his discomfort with the cushier, more pampered parts of celebrity life. Star Wars made him nauseated. When it comes to the movie that made him a mega star, Adam Driver approached Star Wars The Force Awakens the same way he approaches everything, by intimidating the heck out of everyone. Even Mark Hamill, who was in the movie for all of two minutes, described Driver as moody and intense on set, while John Boyega tried to break the ice and failed repeatedly. Said Boyega, I gave Adam hugs randomly, just for no reason. He just stands there. He just waits for me to be done. There's at least one obvious reason why Boyega couldn't get any love from his co-star. And I hate hugging. Like, I don't, I don't like to hug anybody. But it's not the only reason. Driver was still so intimidated by the whole concept of being in Star Wars and the fame that came with it that it took him until well after the movie debuted to fully accept that he was a part 
part of that huge pop culture phenomenon. The actor's new reality didn't go down easy. In one interview, he admitted that he nearly puked at The Force Awakens premiere, but eventually he came to terms with it all. Not only did he break a long-standing rule about watching his own performances in order to see the movie, but he even hugged it out on the red carpet with Oscar Isaac and looked only a little bit weird about it. Such is the power of the dark side. Thanks for watching. Click the Nikki Swift icon to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Plus check out all this cool stuff we know you'll love too.